What's this? Hey, what's this? Ooh, go get it. Muffins and hot chocolate for you? Yes, please. There's a community in Langley, British Columbia that may remind you of your own. You can go for a stroll, pick up a few items at the store, or even pop by the salon. But this village was purposefully built to allow for freedom and quality of life. Because every resident here has something in common. They're all living with dementia. Who's that? No. Driving the car. No. It's you. It's home to Alan Meggie. Before moving in, Alan was a world traveler and adventurer. He climbed some of the highest peaks on the planet and raced cars. Alan has the most adventurous life of anybody I know. He has climbed several very difficult mountains. He's cycled all over. He was even living on a boat when he started to notice some changes. It was called the piracy, and he really enjoyed it there a lot, until it became too difficult for him. He couldn't remember how to work the washing machine. It was just little things that he never had trouble with before. It became a problem. That's you, Alan, right there. Carol Chesham has been Alan's friend for more than 20 years. She knows the village is the best place for his adventurous personality. I think it's very important when you've been an active person that you're in a place where you don't feel institutionalized, where you feel a sense of freedom, and that's what you get here in the village. I said we're gonna have this new person that comes around every day. Elroy Jesperson is one of the co-founders of the village in Langley, the first of its kind in Canada. He worked in senior living for about 30 years and knew there must be a better way to care for people with dementia. Having society, first of all, realize that people with dementia are first and foremost people. They're your family in many cases. They can live a good life, a different life perhaps, but still a good life. So, the five-acre village was built with the guiding principles to make it feel like a neighborhood. With colorful houses, a farm, and even a community center. Seven, shake it out. And one of the key principles of the village is called Rome Free. Many of the people living with dementia become very agitated because they can't move about as they wish. So we said, we need to build a community where people can walk out the door, walk around, come and go as they please, and still remain safe. You're gonna hold down the crescent with your fingers and then paint around the whole thing black around it. Inside the gated community, the people interacting and taking care of the villagers are staff specially trained to work with people with cognitive decline. We want to deinstitutionalize the village as much as possible institutions, hospitals wear uniforms, they wear smocks, they wear scrubs. We aren't that, so we just say, dress as they normally would dress. But the Dementia Village Revolution didn't start here. You need to go to the Netherlands for that. In picturesque Wiesp in Amsterdam, there is a village within a village. This is De Hokovec the world's very first dementia village. It opened in 2009. For Eloy Van Hall, one of the founders of the Hokovic, the mission was simple. You have to transform and normalize. So get rid of the institution because people don't want to live in an institution with the regulations and the, the way people are treated there. So you have to transform to a more normal living environment and normal human behavior. Residents live in one of the 27 homes spanning close to four acres. The village has a restaurant, a supermarket, and a theater, because it's about being social, having the freedom to live your life. Scientific research proves that small-scale living concepts are much better in general for people with dementia. So that is an important element, a house with a front door, a living room, your own bedroom, like you have at home as well. Residents pay on a sliding scale, and the village is subsidized by the Dutch government. The same cost as a traditional nursing home, and staff have specialized training. 
Eloy and the team at the Hokovic want to change dementia care, not just for the 188 residents who live there, but beyond the village. I'm convinced and I see that worldwide this concept can be applied in every country where there is already skilled nursing. It's not a problem. It's how you want to spend the budget. So it's possible everywhere. And creative solutions which focus on the person first will be needed, as rates of dementia are steadily rising. As of 2023, nearly 700,000 people in Canada are living with dementia, and it's been projected that that number will soar to close to 1.7 million by 2050. We need to look at a more socially oriented care, social model of care. Habib Chowdhury is the chair and a professor in the Department of Gerontology at Simon Fraser University. He says villages and other care models that put the person first can help shape the future with training and education as part of the solution. He also adds that the traditional homes that we're used to seeing in Canada were created for more of an acute care model. If you talk about the physical infrastructure, if you go to a nursing home, you feel like you've gone to a hospital setting. Long corridors, rooms on both sides, large dining room, and so on. Even though Canada has a dementia strategy, the majority of care in nursing homes is still delivered in that same old model. Most of the people have some level of dementia. Uh, in long-term care. We need to change this model in, in a dramatic way. We need a transformative change that looks at the person in a more comprehensive, more holistic way. At the village in Langley, Alan and Carol are visiting the hens at the farm. Oh, look at that. Look, look, look. And other villagers are in an exercise class. Right back into that march. Good job. There are 75 residents here, and it's not government subsidized. So residents pay a range from eight to ten thousand dollars a month, depending on their care needs. Not everyone will be able to afford to live in a village like this, but the hope is that this type of care will be an example of what's possible in the future. Just a puppy, Alan. He's only seven months old. And even though Alan may be no longer able to climb mountains or cycle across countries, his life is still full of adventure and dignity. I like people to realize that Alan is a very special, gentle, kind soul. He would never brag about all the wonderful, amazing things. Most people would brag about it, but he's not like that. He's a very kind-hearted, loving person. Oh, thank you. You're welcome, dear. <laughs> You're welcome. And I mean it. <laughs>